Last week on Wayne Anderson, Glory Days, disaster struck when Radio Classy was forced off air. Do you have a licence for the radio station at all? And don't film it, let's just, uh, you know, do what the person said. Well, let's take it off air. CJ, turn off that switch now. Spirits were raised by some big news from Japan. They're actually inviting me over there to actually sing at in one of their restaurants. It says 20,000. Yep. And a fundraising opportunity arrived in Christchurch. You're going to be the celebrity judge at a giant pumpkin festival. How Morrison pulled out. It's a beautiful morning in Christchurch, but when Wayne orders a pie for breakfast, he quickly realises the capital of the South Island is far behind Manarewa in terms of cuisine. Look, I've had about a thousand potato top pies before, you know. I've never in my life seen one that looks like this. You stop a thousand people in Manurewa and ask them and serve that up to them and see what sort of reaction you get, they react exactly like me. They'd be bloody bewildered to have served up a bloody pumpkin. I mean, where's the bloody pastry, for Christ's sake? Well, at least it's nice and hot. Mm. I mean, there was no pastry on it, for Christ's sake. I mean, when somebody orders a pie, I mean, naturally, pie implies pastry, doesn't it? I mean, where was the bloody pastry? I mean, you know, I mean, I find it a little bit hard to concentrate on anything after being... That's it's kind of thrown me, really. But how's the voice holding up? Oh, there's nothing wrong with the voice. Christ Church! Voice seems to be holding up well. Akira, here we come. Akira, here we come. Have you given much thought to how you're going to uh, judge these pumpkins? Well, I have, as a matter of fact, Orlando. Um, to be honest with you, I don't know a great deal about pumpkins or the physical side of pumpkins, but uh, I am a fairly orderly, systematic, routine sort of fellow, as you know, as per my um, record collection being catalogued in all those Eastlight folders from A to Z. So, um, basically, what I'm thinking of doing is simply transposing that record system into the um, pumpkins and uh, just seeing how that pans out. With the festival in full swing, Wayne and head judge Bill are straight into action. Their first judging task, the always challenging seven to nine year old category. What we're looking for here is children, they, they use their imagination and creativity. Oh yes. Right. So looking from, from this section to here, which one would you choose? As the smallest or the largest? No, as the most creative. As the most creative? We are looking for the most creative. So I've basically got to get inside the mind of an eight-year-old. Between seven and nine-year-old, correct. Right. Okay. All right, I'd say number one, number 60. Have you ever ridden a bike? Ridden a bike? Yeah. Yes. There's a bike right there. A bike right here? Yeah. Once again, you have to use your imagination. Oh, I see. This being the bike. I'd really thought of that as being a barrier. I hadn't even thought of that as um, pumpkins. So um, what I'll do is I'll reconsider my decision and I'll put the bike as first and second would be my original choice for first. This one here over here, number 60. Num number 61. Number 60, yeah. After the junior creative category comes the prestigious open artistic section. Some of these look a bit bloody fruity, don't they? Like that one there, for example. And that one there, a little bit decorative, aren't they? But as for this one here, it's really just going a bit too far, really, isn't it? It's um, a bit like one of those public bloody art things we found in Wellington. I mean, is it art or is it a pumpkin? This one here, on the other hand, is spot on. It's perfect. That's a good choice. Great. Excellent choice. Yeah, for sure, number 83. OK, Wayne, this is the giant section of the pumpkin competition. Right. This is my passion. This is why I grow pumpkins. Because I like to grow big ones. I can see that. <laughs> Which one do you think is the biggest here? Well, I was looking at it before, actually, and I was just trying to work out. And uh, I'd say probably maybe that one there. That one there, I would suggest, would definitely be the biggest one. But we won't know until the weigh-in. Till we weigh it, yeah. Till we weigh it. Yeah. 
Would you like my opinion as to how much that weighs? Oh, I'd value it, uh, Bill. Well, I'm going to give you first shot. OK, you tell me how much that one weighs, then. That one there would probably weigh about 35 kilograms. Well, that one weighs 70. I'll give you my opinion. OK. I would suggest that would weigh between 150 and 160 kgs. OK. So it's more than four times bigger than... Absolutely ..heavier correct. than that one. Right. I, I think this one here, num number 21, yeah, maybe... It's a seven to nine category, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Would you be interested in growing a pumpkin? Well, I could get you a seed and... Uh... What I'm more interested in, actually, is uh, what do they taste like? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Little River Giant Country Pumpkin Pumpkin Festival. And here to announce the winners of the largest pumpkin today is our chief judge, Mr Bill Barker, and our celebrity judge, Wayne Anderson. Yeah. <laughs> so second place, Andy Burnett, 98 kgs. 98 kgs. Kgs! <laughs> and the real big one goes to George Hollings, 158 kgs. <laughs> 158 kilos! Yeah! It's not unusual to be loved by anyone. It's not unusual to have fun with anyone. Oh, when I see you hanging about with anyone. Here's your payment, Elena. Cheers, mate. So just 183. I thought it was 500. We could have billeted, yeah, but you guys insisted on staying in the hotel. Well, yeah, well, well thanks anyway, Dan, you know. I, I just explained it to Wayne, yeah. OK. Should help towards Japan. Thank you. Thanks. See you later. See ya. Big bloody difference between 183 and 500. Well, they took off the hotel fee. This morning, I had that bloody hot pot, which was, you know, masquerading as tater top pie, and no bloody pastry. Now I'm walking away with one-fifth of what I was promised. It's going to make uh, the funding for Japan a little bit harder, though. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. That's two bloody black marks against Christchurch. Coming up after the break, the Japan fund comes up short. This is my ticket. I've got $7.10 to get to Japan now. Well, you're the manager, you've got to do something about it. And Wayne farewells his biggest fans at the Elmwood Retirement Village. You're my favourite audience and I love doing the shows for you. Back from his sojourn to the South Island, Wayne is relaxing with his new purchase, a Sinatra box set. Yeah, so this wonderful collection, as you can see, is the Frank Sinatra uh, box set uh, containing uh, the 21 albums he did on Capitol. And I've been saving up for this for a long time. The 40s... I'll just answer this. <coughs> Hello? Oh, Orlando. How are you? Yeah? Well, there is a reason for this. Yeah? There you go, you see. I suppose so. Well, I don't know. I mean, maybe. I need to talk to you about... Um, ..money. It looks like there's been quite a lot that's gone missing. We've got $7.10 by my calculations. And uh, what's happened? Well, there is a reason for that. Um, that money's been spent on the bills. We had a power bill, a humongous power bill. A great big phone bill and the water rates. I mean, there's no way I'm going to go to Japan with all these bloody bills hanging over my head. If I'm in Japan and the power gets cut off, all the meat in the fridge goes off, I mean, you know, you can't even begin to contemplate the... the bad things that could happen. I, I understand your perspective, Wayne. I'm just concerned about what... I've got... $7.10 to get to Japan now. 
Well, you're the manager, you've got to do something about it. Well, I just don't know how I can make that kind of money in three days. Well, if, if I can think of any bright ideas, I'll certainly suggest them to you, but, I mean, that's basically where you come in as manager. Raymond, do you have any ideas? Why don't you turn your ticket into two one-way tickets? Do you think that might work, Orlando? I think that's a great idea. Yes, yeah, I think so too. While Orlando and Raywin head off to solve the ticket dilemma, Wayne is at Elmwood Retirement Village for a farewell performance. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Pleased to be here at Elmwood once again. Now, this might be one of the uh, last times you're seeing me here for a little while because there's something very exciting happening. I'm actually going to Tokyo, Japan. And uh, my very able assistant, um, Faye, here, Thank she's you. actually helping me um, very ably by taking the hat around so I can uh, go to Japan. And um, your contributions would be very, very helpful. As I said, you're my favourite audience and I love doing the shows for you. And then I saw you out the corner of my eye A little girl alone and so shy I had a last waltz with you Bringing you all the love your heart can hold Thank you so much for your, uh, your support and um, Tokyo, Japan, here we come. Thank you. Coming up after the break, Wayne plans his wardrobe for Japan. Yeah, those ones look more like undies, but I think they pass for shorts and the team enjoy a farewell dinner. Why don't we raise a piece of chicken yes. to my success in Japan? Yeah. Always the professional, Wayne packs his luggage two days before departure, enlisting his manager for help. You want to take just enough and not too much, so the question is what sort of things what are is... we going to include? Three or four white shirts. So I'll take the, take the coat hangers. Yeah. It's a rhinestone belt that Faye got for me the other day. Gosh, she's got an eye for stuff. Three shirts, three trousers. True. That's two trousers. Is this a man's belt? Well, I think so. Undies and socks, Wayne, you'll need that. Undies and socks, yeah, OK. Let's go and have a look, eh? Where are you going? Uh, well, go out to the kitchen. You keep your undies in the kitchen? <laughs> well, actually, I keep, uh, it's funny, I keep most of my CDs in the kitchen, as I you know. know. you keep your CDs. But yeah. uh, just below the cupboards, I've got another cupboard for socks and undies. So, uh, where are so, we? So, we'll take a one, one two. So, you're more three. of briefs and uh, um, boxes? Yeah, I think so. And we need some socks, so we've got a couple of pairs of those. What's in that one? Oh, some, some of my backing CDs in there. Well, don't forget some backing CDs. Right, true. Do you want to hang on to those? I'll hold your undies. And I'll uh, get my backing CDs, eh? Mm -hmm. OK, well, we've got three shirts, we've got three trousers, so I suppose we'll need three ties. So what about a uh, colourful one there, red one? That's that's your business tie. Yeah. Taking meetings. Uh, maybe rather than a tie, we'll just have the frills, the frills that we put down the front of the shirt. Frills. It might be good. And a bow tie might be good as well. I think you're right. So we've got three different sorts of things, eh? So um, quite do you a... want to try on a bow tie? Which way around does it go? I haven't got a mirror, guys, so how does that look? That looks pretty good. I think we'd, on the day we'd probably have it more central in the shirt, but it's kind of quite classy, actually. Mm. So, yeah. Interesting choice of shorts. Yeah, well, uh, they're pretty cool. Yeah. That's a little bit thicker. 
Yeah, those ones look more like undies, but I think they pass for shorts. True. You want your black suit? Uh, how many suits do you think we need? Well, do two. Do the black one and the white one. Well, it's going to impinge on how many DVDs you can have. We've got the one gig, one suit for one gig. All right, we'll take okay, this one. So now we're to entertainment section. OK, well, what about uh, This Is Tom Jones? That's his first that's a television series that he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How about a documentary of Engelbert? Like one of Tom, one of Engel. Do you think we just need one of each? I reckon. You know what I reckon? I reckon we should take John Rose, New Zealand's best singer. Yep. But I have been a bit concerned about getting in touch with people, so do you think we should take some the white pages with us? That's probably a good point, Orlando. Just in case we have to phone anyone. Yep, OK. Because I don't, don't think they'll have the Auckland white pages in Japan. There we go. Uh, we won't need the yellow pages. Well, let's see how we go. How heavy is that? Oh, not so bad. Not so bad, is it? Oh, you've got one of these flash ones that... Uh, it's on know. wheels, makes it easier transportable. Excellent. All right, well, you seem to be ready to go, Mr Anderson. Tonight, the team have chosen local favourite, Noki Takeaways, to celebrate the trip to Japan and Wayne's upcoming $20,000 payday. Probably best to keep it simple, I'd say. In fact, I saw a good offer here for 50 chicken nibbles. Which might oh, yeah. make it simple. So that way... Perhaps we just do that, eh? Because it's... Just get 50 chicken nibble. Um, yeah, I'll get uh, your special of uh, 50 chicken pieces. And uh, I'll also add to that uh, one of your 1.5s of LMP. And can I get five uh, paper cups with that as well? Just choice, if you like. Oh, you don't have straw, you don't have cups. Hey, guys. They don't, they don't have cups, so they're just going to give us five separate straws and we'll just have to take it in turns. Very unhygienic, but... Uh... Well, I thought if we've got our own straws, it should be all right. Yes. Just no backwashing. Wayne, how are you going to get on with the, um, the Japanese language? Well, I had thought about that, Raymond. And um, basically, I think the hello and goodbye and that sort of thing would be fairly straightforward, with the hand gestures and that sort of thing. But music, as I say, is a universal language, and therefore the language barrier is actually broken there. So probably um, the way I would get around the language barrier would be through um, singing. Maybe singing some um, phrases like, you know, Can you help me? Is this the way to Tokyo? Or something like that. Well, it certainly be an opportunity, Wayne, to test your linguistic skills. Yeah, the hand gestures and the music together. I think would uh, help the communication. Since we don't have a beer mug or a cup, why don't we raise a piece of chicken yes. to, to Wayne Anderson. my success in Japan. And Harold, yes. your forthcoming trip will day be a, a real a spectacular success. Yes. Finally, the wait is over. Today, Wayne and Orlando leave for Japan, and with a long flight ahead, Wayne ensures he's adequately prepared. Well, this is one of the most exciting days of my life. I've never been out of the country before. It'll be my first time in Japan, first time out of the country, in fact, and I think it's vitally important to look good. Now, this afro comb is really one of the most important pieces of equipment to uh, uh, contribute towards my styling and my grooming. Uh, having curly hair or basically having wavy hair, I usually start with this afro comb and uh, there's sort of two ways I can have my hair. I can usually have it uh, really curly and fluff it up on the top or I can just sort of comb it straight back like that. So in this particular instance we're just going to uh, comb it straight back and then what I do is I get the this comb here which is slightly closer, the teeth are slightly closer together. So we use that and then finally, because we're doing it this way, we get this comb here with the fine, the fine tooth comb. And we comb it down like that. Grooming and, you know, preparation's harder than work. So if I'm, if I'm gonna do this thing, 
I want to do it right. And uh, this is all, this is all part of it. Wayne, now you're 100% sure you got everything? Yep. You double checked everything? Yep. The whole lot, yep. You happy, Faye? Yes, I'm good. OK, well, let's go. Japan, here we go. Next week on Wayne Anderson, Glory Days, we travel from the land of the long white cloud to the land of the rising sun with Manurewa's finest. Man, it's pretty different to Manurewa, Wayne. Yeah, looks more like Christchurch to me, Orlando. The language barrier presents some challenges. An Afro comb? Comb? I don't think they understand, Orlando. And Wayne offends the locals with inappropriate shoe etiquette. You just take off your shoes for the stage. Oh, okay. we'll, we'll just we'll just start that again. Start that again. so you can see more of New Zealand on air.